Yo, yo, you ready? Are you ready? Because today is the day. Today is the day. Hasbro PulseCon 2022, day one. We got a ton of Transformers stuff to talk about today. It's your boy, Proto Man. And let's get into that. There is a lot of stuff to break down there. There's a lot of stuff to make sense of. So we got to see everything, everything. We're going to break these down into separate segments. It's going to be a visual podcast for the next couple of hours for you guys. So keep your eyes on the screen. I'm going to be showing everything. And let's get into Transformers Legacy Evolution. This is the name that they are going to be going with for the brand for 2023. 2022 is Legacy. 2023 is Legacy Evolution. Which is interesting because the prototype name for Legacy initially when they were first developing the brand back in 2021 was Legacy Evolution. So they're actually going to be sticking with that name for the sequel of it. This is awesome stuff. I guess we're going to see now how this is going to work out if it is going to be a trilogy, Legacy, Legacy Evolution, Legacy, whatever it's going to be in 2024. But let's jump into it. We're going to start with our core classes. So we got a whole bunch of toy reveals. We got a whole bunch of licensing reveals. We're going to go through everything, make sense of what we're looking at here. And you could just post your comments below and get hyped for what's going to be happening. So we got all our guys together. And the first ones we have to talk about is our core class stuff. So we're going to be getting core class Dinobots. So the first ones that they showed us, they showed us, of course, a core class slug, a.k.a. slag. And looks pretty good. Again, through the limitations that do exist from a core class, they were able to pull it off pretty nicely. And they went with that red accurate, show accurate face, a.k.a the Canadian accurate face because red face slag was a Canadian exclusive back in 1985. And it was actually how this whole podcast got its name back in the day. Cause it was the first ever Canadian exclusive toy. And that's where the transformer slag podcast name comes from. Little fun fact there that you're learning today. If you didn't know already. Um, but yeah, so we got slag. It looks pretty good. Again, the, you know, you could look at the, the, the kibble that's hanging off of it and stuff. And people were kind of going like, Ooh, those look kind of bulky. But there is kind of a, a reason for that, and we'll get into that in a moment. They also sold, showed us Sludge, and Sludge was the one that had a lot of kibble on him, but still looks pretty good. I, the alt mode looks kind of bizarre, but again, the limitations of that core class. I mean, when they were showing the images actually holding it and stuff, I was like, yeah, those guys are going to be tiny. So that's, a, that's really tough to kind of work within the price point. But then when they said that this stuff is going to be a combiner, and we're going to see the return of the Volcanicus trademark and bringing back the Dinobot Combiner team. I was like, oh, okay, now it starts to make sense with all this kibble and why they do look a little more bulky. So we're going to be getting a Combiner for the Legacy line of Legacy Evolution in 2023, but it's not going to be within the price point of a Commander and a bunch of Deluxes, although that might be the case still. We don't know what our Commander will be for 2023. But... We're going to be getting a smaller combiner through the core class. And that's pretty cool. Now, they mentioned here that it's going to be six Dinobot members. So you're going to have the traditional five of Grimlock, Sludge, Swoop, Snarl, and uh, Slug, um, or Slag. But there's going to be a sixth member. Now, they mentioned that it's a male character. They said he, which I heard. So Slash was once a, an extra member, uh, but that was a female character. There was also Paddles. That was a male edition. That was like just a one-shot kind of sixth member. So there's a lot of different you know, speculations of what it could be. Could be a brand new character completely, completely, completely. But what's also interesting is, and it clicked in my head because I was like, oh, six members, it's a smaller combiner. And it reminded me of a six-member smaller combiner from Generation 1 Japan, or if you want to even count, you know, its American counterpart, but more so its Japanese counterpart because of the Dino connection, the Dino Force and Dino King. And I was just going like, hmm, you know, the way that chest looks, the way it's going to have six members to combine and everything, that's probably going to transform a little differently than the original Combiner Wars Volcanicus. Um, that's going to be very interesting because potentially, potentially we could even see with this tooling, with this core class Dinobot team of combiners, we might even see much later on 
a Dino King, Dino Force, Dino Pretenders, Transformers Victory repaint retool. So that's pretty hype because they were six members. And that's that's going to be very interesting to see what they do, especially like you could get Grimlock and you can make them look like them. And like that would be very interesting. And that that's like some, you know, way ahead planning in a lot of ways, because they obviously got to put out those six Dinobots for, first through that core class. And then maybe they're going to do the repaint retools through a, a store exclusive, or maybe they'll just save it for much later or do a box set on Hasbro Pulse as a generation selects. But that is something to consider. And it's very interesting. They also mentioned how the, the ports for the combiners are going to be six millimeter pegs. So it's going to work with all your weapons and your, your fossilizers and everything that we've had up to this point, all the, the weaponizers. So all this mixing and matching could still exist and, and the, the creativity that we've already seen through Kingdom and, of course, in a mild extent, through the early Legacy stuff. Uh, this could continue now with these Dinobot combiners where there's going to be some probably some interesting mixing and matching going on. I guess the idea of the fossilizer... Uh, is definitely not dead. And we're going to get into that, especially with a, a brand new character that they also revealed later today. Uh, that the the weaponizer, the battle masters, the fossilizers, and and all this combining elements, uh, the modulators, you know, they don't want that to die because there's a fun creative aspect to it. And it continues even in the core class by doing that with these Dinobot combi combiners. Very cool stuff. Uh, the design for the Dinobots was done by Shusun, along with Evan. So that's pretty cool. I mean, fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Really hype about that. Um, and the art that they showed. They showed some gorgeous art, which I'm going to get into the art afterwards because the art has all kinds of spoilers going on uh, for what's, what we're going to be expecting. But uh, the art was done by uh, Mario and Christina. So shout out to them. Fantastic stuff. The last core class that they showed us was one that was to be expected. Sooner or later, he was going to get this repaint. And it was that of a core class. Sound Blaster, the Transformers Headmasters revival repaint of Soundwave. Now they went with the clear purple kind of chest instead of the clear red. The clear red is more uh, toy accurate, but when he was in the show, the way that the animation model was done and it was colored it gave more of a purple hue. I always kind of saw that more of like a reflection of the sky, Cybertronian or Earth, and giving that purple hue on his chest. Uh, so they're going more with that kind of color scheme. They didn't mention it in the stream, but you could tell by the box art that instead of getting Laserbeak as the little mo like non-transformable tape in his chest, now you're getting Buzzsaw. So that's pretty cool. They kind of like, you know, and it makes sense because when you look at the veneering and the fine detail of that sculpt, if you're not going to change the sculpt and you're going to directly repaint it, you got to go with Buzzsaw. You know, that's the, the only other one. Unless you're going with the obscure, we're going to do Sundor. Or something, but actually, that would technically be an Autobot. But you know, so they went with uh, Buzzsaw. They didn't mention it, but you could see it in the box art by Mar by uh, Mario and Christina. So shout out to them. That looks really cool. And again, we're you know, hey, it's it's Sound Blaster. That's a fantastic mold, by the way, to begin with. That that core class Soundwave is absolutely incredible for what it is for that price point. So to get another version of him, and now you could get another cassette. So you're some if you're someone who doesn't even care about Sound Blaster, you don't need the black repaint, but you want to get that other cassette. You got to get Sound Blaster just to get Buzzsaw, and then you get the true G1 original 1984 toy release with Buzzsaw. Pretty hype stuff. So that's it for the the core class. Looks pretty good. They obviously also might as well just dive into it quickly. They also talked about you know some little spoilers on the art. But not too much that we're going to dive into. We'll dive into it at the end of the day with all of this. But looks pretty good. Obviously, there's going to be a swoop. There's going to be others. The Dinobots are on their way. And uh, we'll talk to you again real soon later today on the Transformer Slag podcast. It's going to be a busy day today for Transformers.